Hello. Hey, bud. How are you? How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. We ha we we have technical problems with pretty much everyone okay. <laughs> that's been on here. So, but we're good now. Good to go. Uh, so I guess the first most important question I ask you is, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, currently just packing. Gonna head off this weekend for uh, Sacramento and do another axle attempt. So we'll see. Middleweight or open record? Middleweight. Can I ask what, what number you're going for? Or is that top secret? Nah, hoping to hit 280, 285 would be my ultimate because I've only had that one time before. So That, that would be crazy. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> so I guess speaking of axle lifting and those sorts of things, what got you into strength training? Mm -hmm. strength training actually started back at like 24 hour fitness because everybody has their like cardio bunny phase I got bored and I wasn't getting the look that I wanted I actually joined um it's like one of their little weightlifting classes that they had then once I felt myself kind of graduate or advance out of that I turned to YouTube and from there I started going out to the floor myself teaching deadlifts squats bench those kinds of things so you think there's definitely a, it's it's more fun lifting heavy than just running on the treadmill every day? That's a 100% truth. <laughs> but it depends on the person. Some people still enjoy that. So I leave them, leave them to their treadmills and their cardio equipment. Do you think there's any carryover for that with strongman? Because, I mean, obviously you're very strong, but you could just do powerlifting, right? You know, mm -hmm. why, why stay with something that has sort of that cardio element to it? It's to me, it's way more fun, it's way more challenging. Um, powerlifting, okay, you have squat, bench, dead, that's it. You think of all the strongman elements, there's probably 30, 40, if you can even count them all. In a show, you'll have six to seven alone, um, so it's just a lot more fun, it's a lot more dynamic. And to me, strongman is more functional for just like regular life, like we do overhead. You don't need help carrying boxes, moving furniture. Like you can do that stuff for yourself versus not to put powerlifting down, but it's very static where I feel like strongman is very dynamic and pretty much good for overall health. So do you think part of it too is the gyms as well? Like I know powerlifters with their gyms, it's like a hardcore, you know, whatever going, going in there and going crazy where it seems like you and your, you know, the bear family, you, you guys have a really good community out there. Do you think there's a difference in that sort of community versus, you know, like a family versus just a, a gym, like a hardcore gym bro thing? I don't know, I'm not doing a good job of explaining that, but. No, I get it. Yeah. Um, I have seen and kind of heard about those kinds of people, those kinds of gyms, but it really depends. Um, the cliche powerlifting gym is that it's like the ego guys who grunt, yell, scream um, for every rep and they don't talk to anybody heads down, but. There are going to be exceptions to everyone, but you do come across the powerlifters where we actually will cross train sometimes, um, like we'll squat together, dead together, and they become part of our community um, where pretty much we say, leave your ego at the door and you'll learn so much more. Um, Cause at our gym, we have everybody from crossfitters, powerlifters, bodybuilders. So it's bringing everybody together. But yeah, it could definitely depend on the gym. If all you know is the powerlifting life, the powerlifting gym, you're going to take on that mindset for weightlifting where they've come to our gym in that mindset and they actually ultimately change because they like, uh, we have a lot of fun. We're always laughing, but we still get our stuff done. So again, it depends on the person, depends on the gym, but I have seen examples of those people. <laughs> you come across them a lot. Yeah. Cause you have a very strong gym. I mean, you have, I'm, I'm forgetting her name right now, but there's another woman there who I think mm -hmm. her axles 260 or so. I think she did that out of the yeah. rack, 260. Right. And then, you know, your your coach is probably one of the strongest people not competing active. I know he's injured right now, but, you know, the, the numbers that he's put up just in training are right. insane. <laughs> you want to say that again so he can hear you, like, out loud? No. <laughs> we tell him every day that he's one of the strongest humans on the planet, so. I mean, he has to be statically, at least. I mean, I don't know what his moving events are like. But... Well, those actually could be very equal to his um, statics because 
when he's good and healthy, he jumps under a thousand pound yoke just for shits and giggles and runs with it. And we're like, okay, fuck you too. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool to see him train. He's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen him, what do you log press out of the rack, I think 480 on one foot. And yep. then he did 357 for five box squats with his broken wrist or torn, yep. torn bicep. Sorry. He just gets underweight and he... Honestly, they call it con conquering the weight, at least in my eyes. Like, all right, what are we doing today? And he's going to hit it. And he's going to blow everybody's minds, which is still incredible. So when people say we have a strong gym, I'm like, that's why. Because that is our nucleus. He is our center. When the person who's running stuff is strong, you can't help but I want to do that. I mean, he has an effect on everybody he meets. Well, I think California specifically also has a very good, at least strong man scene. I mean, you have Ode Haugen and his side Tom, i don't know if you know tommy burns yeah, um, very well. <laughs> yeah one of one of my friends actually cornell Bar, uh, barbell alum a guy named nick beeble he works very closely with tommy burns uh runs their youtube and stuff you got him you've got you know jacob you ode haugen martins right um even the middleweight guys uh sean damaris i think is his name like four times california's uh yeah, strongest man it's it, it's a it's a big thing out there you had the Arnold Santa Monica too. Yep. You know, it's, do you think that contributes at all to, you know, if you were in say Missouri, do you think you'd have, been, or Wisconsin, something like that, you know, like it just one, one of those states is not as well known for strongman. Do you think you would have found it like this? Or do you think you would have just kind of stuck to cardio and maybe done your deadlifts and, and bench? For for sure, I probably never would have found a resource like this because I didn't even know I was looking for it. It just happened, kind of happened to fall upon it. So especially in those states that they don't really have it, it's not really a thought. Um, they are getting more resources thanks to like online training, um, Instagram, of course, you can see what other people around the world are doing. So now they know. Um, but before Instagram was kind of really big, people in those states, they don't have the resources. And personally, if I lived over there or if I never met Jacob, I probably would still just be at 24 hour. I mean, getting stronger, but probably more along the bodybuilding route. Um, Cause I wouldn't know what else to do. <laughs> like you just don't know about yourself. Did, did you have an athletic background before this or you just went to, went to the gym one day? I just really went to the gym. The most close thing I've done to athletics. Um, I was in the high school marching band, which people do underestimate because you're out there under that baking sun <laughs> for hours um, but that's as close as I could get to um, an actual sport. So this is my first time around being an athlete. That's just incredible. I mean, the, for anyone who doesn't know, you know, you have a block press world record, you have an axle press world record. I, I'm sorry. Uh, ax I know you have log, right? Do you have yeah, axle as well? Is, is it just every overhead thing you, you've got at this point? We're uh, trying to gonna do axle this weekend. So. Axle this weekend. Sorry. Um, and you, you pulled 484, uh, 584, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. the other week. You know, it's to, to think that someone like you was just kind of walking around and didn't didn't know how good you could be is really in, interesting and impressive. I appreciate that. And I do attest it very, very much so to my training. Like, people want to give you the credit for it, but it's like, honestly, if I walked around in a gym, I don't know what I'm doing. So it's like coming across Jacob was the one of the biggest blessings because it literally changed your entire life. Once you get into strength training, you don't realize it changes your mindset. It changes your outlook on life. And so this is the route that I've been most grateful for. And there could be potentially so many more people out in the world that aren't aware of their potential or just walking around like you say I was. But um, that's why he tries to reach out to as many as they can and he literally can turn anybody into an athlete so it's like yeah it's kind of surprising um, not coming from my background but that's again coming into Jacob's coaching as to just how good it is he can transform anybody into your ultimate goals. Well, I think you and someone like Melissa Peacock you guys are kind of right on the cusp of the explosion of women of strong women you know, as a, as a sport, right? Because I don't think OSG had, there was no world strongest woman until 2017, right? Ar Arnold didn't have anything till around that time either. That's right. Right. And then now as middleweights, which, you know, you're, you're not tiny, but you're not the biggest athletes. <laughs> um, you know, the fact that you guys are, are pushing 300 pounds on everything overhead. 
you know, it's going to be a, a really big explosion of women like you. And I don't know Melissa's background, but, you know, th think about how many people could get inspired by you or her or even the stuff that Anthony Furman's doing with Clash. You know, the, 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 the guys more like my size who, who now have an avenue. Um, I, don't know, I, I, I think it's very exciting to see what's going to happen and all the, the new talent that's going to come through which I think you're, you're right on the forefront of. Um, so I guess when you're not at the, at Jacob's gym, what do you, uh, what's your, what's your day job? What do you? I'm at the gym. So I'm pretty gym. much okay. the gym, like manager. I run it side by side with him. So we're in there day in, day out. That's what we do. <laughs> so you, I guess you're, you're there all the time. Do you think that helps at all? Just I do. being in that environment. Absolutely do. Cause it allows me to focus. Um, it allows you to always be like you said, in the environment you want. I'm around the equipment. I know every piece of equipment there. So it's just like, it's that home field advantage where practice makes perfect. The more comfortable you get with something, you're better. You're going to be at it. So I, I think it contributes a lot to it. I'm pretty much there probably close to 13, 14 hours a day. If I'm not training, we're coaching other people. If we're not coaching, we're cleaning, we're working on the business background. So it's always there. Like I'm surrounded by it 24 seven. That's, that's great. I mean, it, it seems like the most successful people, the end goal or along the way is to work at a gym or own their own gym. I know Martins has his new gym out mm -hmm. there. Hathor did the same thing. Right. Um, you know, it's the fact that you can do it at a, you're four years into strong woman at this point. Yeah, this is my fourth. Yeah. Okay, so still relatively new in your career. You know, people people like Nick Best and Mark Felix are in their mid fifties and still going. Yeah, so, that's what I'm glad to do. Don't yeah. ever stop. Maybe adjust along the way, but don't stop. Yeah, it's the stuff they're doing is incredible too. The the, the masters division. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's it's interesting that so early in your career you can. I mean, if you're, if you're running the gym, you're essentially, I, I know it might be under his name and everything, but it's, you guys have that gym together and you can, right. you, you can work in that environment. That's kind of, that's the end goal of a lot of people. And you're, you're, you're kind of already there. That's how I feel. That's why every day, like, it's like, you don't take it for granted. Yeah. There's the tough days. There's the tiring days, but at the end of the day, you're right where you want to be, where you need to be, where you've always thought of. Um, and it is a dream setting, like to be able to work, train and be in that epicenter of what you want to become. So it's like everything is right at my fingertips. So there's no excuse. I mean, I work at a library and I love reading. So, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I get what you mean. So I guess this is kind of a, you've already answered this, but would you say lifting has had a very positive effect on your life? In it has. Um, cause people don't realize like lifting, Oh, isn't that hard? Or I don't have time. Is it boring? <laughs> like, no, when you find the time you're investing in yourself, if you don't like what you see in the mirror, lifting is going to improve that. If you're having mental cloudiness, you're stressed, you're fatigued, you're in, like anxiety, lifting will help that. So what people think about lifting is that it's hard, it's strenuous. It is, but it's also way more beneficial than sitting in your couch, having an anxiety attack trying to figure out what to do next in life. So it helps you tremendously when you need an outlet, it's there. So anyone who doesn't lift, I highly encourage it. Yeah. And, and you don't really have to be the best in the world either. I mean, no, just do it for yourself. That I mean, you know, coming, coming from you, that might seem contradictory, but, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it, you don't have to be the best ever. It's just any level can help. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly and like me if you find that level you find it, it turns into a passion then you can make the decision okay maybe I do want to do this full-time but if not like we have people in there they're like I look forward to this this is my favorite part of the day and they release everything there and then go back out to the world to work life family jobs but at least for that hour two hours they have their me time and they have that bare family time and they release it hit the weights, socialize, and it just lets them, you know, everything comes down. So again, the stress level goes down, the anxiety goes down, self-image goes up, self-confidence goes up. So I don't really see a downside, <laughs> to be honest. I think uh, Nick Beeble has talked about that 
with me. I want to, I want to talk to him on here at some point too. He's always busy. Um, <laughs> but with, at the strongman club uh, with Tommy Burns, they have strongman Saturday where it's exactly as you describe, you know, you yeah. don't have to be Jacob or Martins or you or anything, you know, just come out there, pull a truck, see what, see what it's like and, and have, yeah. and have fun. And you can say to your, say to yourself and say to your friends, Oh, look, I pulled a truck, you know, and the videos are half the fun. Um, we have a joke. I mean, it's kind of a running fitness joke, but like if you didn't record it, it doesn't count. But it's like, it's so much fun. People are not going to believe you if you say, I pulled a truck. They're like, yeah, okay. Like, no, really, I pulled a truck. It's like your everyday person who can teach you anything and you'll have a blast. And then who knows, maybe it'll make their month. I never thought I could do that is one of the top things we hear in our gym. And it's one of the best feelings ever. <laughs> Well, I, I think sometimes people don't understand how strong people are. Like, take take your overhead press, for example. Oh, there's Melissa. Um, so the average American male is about 190 pounds. Okay. You're putting over your head almost 100 pounds more than the average American male weighs. <laughs> and, you know, you, you're the, the block press, I think it's 220, right? It was close. It was 215. 215? Okay. Yeah. 25 pounds over, you know, your coworker, your your brother, your your dad, anyone you see walking around. It, it's really impressive if you compare it to what the average people are and what they and what they see in their daily life. That's where like something like pulling a truck comes in yeah. comes in with that. You know, like how, how crazy of a visual it, is it to think of, you know, say you have a guy on a barbell and he has a 90 pound weight on his back and that's how much you can put over your head. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I do think of it as fun as um, that sometimes, or even when we do farmers, like we get up to on average now for women are 200 pounds a hand. So it's like, okay, I can literally pick up two guys by their belts and carry them with me. Like those are some cool thoughts. Yeah. Um, like, no, I don't ever need help with moving anything or things like that. It's just like, it's cool. Like being strong is just, it's uplifting. And I don't ever really see myself giving that up. Yeah. I think that's kind of ties into what we said earlier about powerlifting where, you know, at a certain point, weight on the bar just looks like weight on the bar. But if you're helping your friend move and they say, do you want me to help you with the sofa? And you just pick it up, you know, that, that, <laughs> that, that puts in context for people. It does. Yeah. And it allows you to pick things up and use your leverages. Like I have this big awkward object. We know how to wrap our bodies around it, how to lift with our hips, our legs, squeeze, whatever, so we can get from point A to point B and be done. And like, you know, the average person, they might wait, grab a dolly, get a friend. I'm not saying we don't do those things. There are limits, but for the most part, you can get around pretty well. Yeah, I mean, not to draw too much attention to myself, but I work at a library, like I said, and all I do is carry boxes of donations all day. Mm -hmm. And so I tried Atlas Stones for the first time, I think two weeks ago. And okay. I, just, I, I just looked at it, I picked up, I was like, it's exactly like a box of books. <laughs> it's, the it, it's, just the, exactly. it's the same thing, you know, a little heavier, but it's the same bend down, wrap, wrap your arms around that exact same kind of motion. Exactly. And, and it, it, it puts things in context. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you don't ever get into strongman professionally or whatever, it'd be like, I can do everyday things. It made my job easier. It made, um, actually a great example is I was somewhere and I saw this poor small little guy struggling with his baby, like the little baby handler. And I was like, you know what? If he just lifts a little bit, that baby is going to feel like five pounds. So it's just like, it makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 fun. The applications outside of the gym too. Right. Like you know, I can still pick up my nieces and put them over my head. You know, and they're so little. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's they they enjoy it. So, um, so what were you doing before you got into this lifting? I guess professionally, personally, in your life, what what was your life like before strongman? Um, honestly, really boring. I was kind of trying to find my way, find what I wanted to do. Um, I worked in a lot of call centers, a lot of customer service areas. And then um, trying to find what I wanted to do, I did go to culinary school, which I do now apply with my meal prep service, but I was not all that exciting. Um, kind of just wandering lost, you know, how early 20s are, what do I want to do, who do I want to be. And then finding strength, it's 
finally like it clicked like okay this is my thing where I was no longer searching got out of call centers I could no longer have somebody controlling my schedule can I go to the bathroom can I move can I blink can I breathe like I couldn't handle that anymore so I had to get out so would you say So what kind of skills do you think you picked up from being in the gym, not just lifting, but, you know, managing the gym? Do you think you'd helped with things like time management, marketability, those, I mean, because you've grown a fairly large following for both the gym and your, and yourself. And your name is out there. Clearly Anthony Furman knew to reach out to you about, about Clash on the Coast. And I'm sure there's a lot of strong people who don't always get that recognition. Do 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 you think that helped? that being in that environment? Oh, it definitely did. Um, and again, to attest a lot of that too, Jacob, because um, before that I was just 24 um, hour fitness. Then I went to 24 hour fitness as a trainer, hated it. Cause again, they didn't care about the person. They just cared about bottom line numbers, but going into the training aspect of it. Um, that's how I came to Jacob be like, Hey, or do you need help? Or kind of trying to remember how I came to help him. Um, and then he took me under like his member, his mentorship, excuse me. And so with him, he's taught me how to network, how to get your name out there, what to post, what videos are good. Um, again, his coaching, how to coach people. So it's really taking my introverted self from behind a phone where you can't see me and putting me out in front of people. So I would say that's one of the main things that I have learned with him is just networking, talking to people, posting getting your name out there because if you you want to be known you want to be invited to things they have to know you exist (laughs) so we've been doing that with both myself and the gym yeah and it's it's very easy to be forgotten you know it's i don't know if you would know there's a man named andrew clayton who competed he used to he would flip-flop between 105 he won 105 worlds um the year before Furman did so i think 2017 um and he was also a heavyweight and he tore his ACL going for the Axel world record in 2019. Um, he was competing against Evan Singleton, Bobby Thompson, Wesley Claiborne, Trey Mitchell, all these guys who now have really big followings. You know, that was his chance to be at that level. And since August of 2019, you know, he's still active. He's still trying to recover and all that stuff, but he's just kind of fallen off the map. I, I really want to talk with him too. He's another person I want to reach out to. Um, but, you know, it, it was so quick that he went from, he was at a Giants Live show, Giants Live North America, you know, winning the show at that point. Could have been on the plane to World's Strongest Man in May of 2020 had that happened. Um, but in instead, he's just, you know, kind of forgotten by a lot of people. And, and it's a bummer. But, you know, it, it, that marketability really is important right now. And mm. the, I, I spoke with someone who's not a huge fan of him, but you, you kind of have, not, I'm sorry, not, not Andrew Clayton, um, who's not a huge fan of this next person, but like someone like Robert Oberst. I think he's really, fu- I think he's funny. And, you know, maybe he's not the strongest in the world, but he's really good at marketing himself. Yes. You know, yeah. and even the people who don't like him don't want to see him lose. And that's TV, you know, it, <laughs> right? You know, like I have, I have nothing against him, but you know, there's a lot of talk about does he deserve to be a world's strongest man or, or whatever. But at the end of the day, at some some of it at least is a popularity contest. Which is it is, um, which is hard to balance. Yeah, yeah, because you want to post, you want to get your name out there without coming across as like the arrogant, the conceited. They're like post a lot. But it's like, okay, I'm posting things that I feel like would reach somebody in the right area's attention. Like somebody who has control of that show might see that. And then you get a call to get invited. So it's like, it's finding that balance between what to post, the popularity contest, you know, um, getting your name out there, the public, like the public eye. So you bring in Robert Obers into example. He's very good at... Um, the public side because he's loud he talks a lot things like that yeah. but then you got to have both sides when you do the publicity you have to produce so that's what i feel when they invite him to shows and stuff he doesn't produce right. so it's finding the combination of the two that makes you good like when you zero the squad event at world's strongest man 
after talking about the squat. So it's like, how, <laughs> all right. About, you're happy that you're not doing deadlifts because you're a better squatter. Yeah. Like, sure. <laughs> so that's kind of what I mean. Like yeah. be the loud mouth, but have something to back it up with. Well, that's the, the guy I talked to is a guy named uh, Manuel Frias. He's out over here on the East Coast. Um, but one of the names that he mentioned was someone like Evan Singleton, who I'm, I'm also a big fan of. I don't know if you know him as well. Um, but, you know, big, loud mouth, former WWE wrestler, but he backs everything up. You know, he didn't, he didn't make to the finals this year, but he says his deadlift has improved and he pulls 950 in training. He says he's got some of the strongest shoulders in America and he does 205 on the log. You know, it's that there's a difference in, you know, let's see, Bobby Thompson, Trey Mitchell, Nathan Goltry, um, Evan, uh, who, uh, other, other names of, of people, uh, Jacob, um, you know, Obers cannot claim to have the strongest shoulders in America anymore. He just can't. <laughs> it was like a running joke in our gym because we do have both Goltry and Jacob in our gym. Yeah. And them going back and forth is absolutely hilarious. So that's kind of, kind of the highlight of some of their training days, to be honest. Do, do <laughs> they see know. which one of them can, can press more than over strict? <laughs> they just make fun of it because, like, they'll press and then make a snarky comment or a sarcastic comment or something stupid. So, But they're both very good pressers. They even go back and forth with each other. Um, mostly Jacob is just, like, messing with Goltry because um, pressing side – Jacob, you've seen, is very statically strong. So I feel like Goltry has a lot like to learn from him, and he has learned a lot from him. But just watching them is what I love about strongman. They push each other, they have a great time, um, and they produce. And so they do make fun of those that talk but don't produce. Yeah, it's no, that that feeds into the marketability. You know, you you can talk all you want, but you know, if I go around saying that I'm the strongest man in the in the world, no one's going to listen to me because it's not true. It, it, <laughs> Right, it it just doesn't it doesn't mean anything if 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 I went to world strongest man I'd zero everything, and then. But on the other side, you get popular for just saying it because people yeah. love to hate on the opposite side. Like you would get all the attention from everybody because all they want to do is prove you false. So right, it works either way. And and that's uh, that's why I think he keeps getting invited, is yeah. everyone yeah. everyone says oh well he's terrible he's not going to do it and you know behind the scenes they're like do you want to watch him fail and, exactly. and people like, oh, they want to watch him so put him up there that's exactly yeah. why he's, he's good entertainment when he um i think it was manchester 2018 he stole a beer from a fan chugged it threw it in the audience and trash talked eddie hall that's good television and that's why exactly it's like is he good sometimes but is he good to watch yeah people like it yeah it's it's good so speaking of the world's strongest man and the world's strongest woman and your records coming up, what kind of goals do you have for the future? Because I'm sorry, how, how old are you? Late, I'm assuming late 20s? 29. 29? Yeah, 29. Okay. So you, you've got time for, for all these things. You know, people, what I've seen generally, and I could be wrong, um, is a lot of people don't peak till their mid to late 30s. So that, that gives you a, at least another 10 years you know, as, assuming you stop there, which it does. Rest of your strong woman career. Sorry, am, I, am I back? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess not necessarily the next 10 years, but for the rest of your strong woman career, what kind of goals do you have in mind? Um, actually, a lot of the big goals, like pretty much following in the tracks of what we like to call the pioneers, uh, like the Leifas, the Donnas, the Andreas. Um, I really do look at Donna because she has been in the game long running, Kristen Rhodes long running, yeah. and that's what I want to do, is I want to go as hard as I can for as long as I can, win as many shows, get as many titles, and go out with a bang. So it's like, I want people to know who I am, I want them to know what I've done, and I want them to see that anybody can do it like it sounds ridiculous um coming from me because i get looks when i tell people that but i'm like honest to god anybody can do this <laughs> because uh, he took a whatever nobody gym rat and turned him into a strong woman on her way to like i want to say some of the biggest numbers that you're going to see hit so it's like exciting so my ultimate goals are yeah just stay strong as long as i can injury free and just keep running for as long as i can go 
So what, what does it feel like to know that you're going to be on ESPN on July 4th? Um, honestly, don't really have a lot of feelings about it, really. Because <laughs> it kind of already happened. Um, and so I'm like, okay, now you guys get to play catch up. Um, and actually, I haven't really thought much about it, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, people like Kristen Rhodes, they don't, people don't always realize that she's been at the top level as long as Terry Hollins has. She yeah. said in she's her latest been... post, 2006. <laughs> she, she, that is that is an OG. That is that's 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 one of the first. I mean, I think the first World's Strongest Woman was 2002, and they haven't they that? haven't held it every year since then. But you know, that's that's really close to the inception of strong woman as a sport. And yeah, yeah it's very that, new. Yeah. No, I mean, strong man itself is is new as well. 1977. It's not. Yeah. We're, we're but considering just, the gap, the strong woman has eons to go. Oh, like yeah, we're just 100%. now instead at the cusp. Imagine us now, 2021. We're pushing these numbers. These numbers give us 10 years. God knows where these numbers are going to go. So we only perfect it more. We only train more, and it's going to push the limits. Well, there you already have female Olympic weightlifters who can uh, split jerk 400. On a, on a normal bar, wait, wait till that becomes, you know, the the criteria for strong woman. That'll be really cool to see. Just and insane. Then, <laughs> and then, yeah, you've got people like uh, Lucy Underdown and Andrea Thompson as well, pulling over 300 yeah. kilograms on multiple variations of the bars. Right. And, you know, you're, you're pushing 600 pounds in the deadlift. Right? That's... That's one of the ultimate goals, so it's just... I'm actually very excited to be a part of um, one of the front runners of the sport, hopefully, because that's setting the boundaries, that's setting the new leads. Like these are wheelings. Yeah, and it's people like you. I don't know if Melissa's still on here or not. I can't tell, uh, but I'm a big fan of you if you are. Um, but. Yeah, you know, you, Melissa, Corey Butler, who was out there as well. Right. You know, there, there's a lot I've seen on Terry Rady's stories. I, I, I sit through all the rants. I think they're interesting. Um, <laughs> but he's talking about how some heavyweight men can't do 275 on an axle or a log. And, you know, as, as middleweight women, you guys are crushing that. And that's, it's, it's really cool to see. And, you know, also people like Brianna Lovelace pulling 600 pounds at however, however light she is, 100, 130 pounds, something like that. Yeah, she's tiny. So, yeah, it, it, it'll be a very interesting next 10 years or so when, you know, the women's log numbers are up there with what Sinjurnus' log was in 2005. At, at the heavyweight yeah, back then, men's level. Like three, 400 pound log was like amazing. So it's like now the men are pushing five, 550. It's like even the men's numbers are just getting insane. So the sport is just growing I and mean, growing. People like Marius Pujanowski, you know, five time world strongest man winner. I think his best log was 170 kilograms, maybe 160 or so. And I think he did 170. Yeah. And then you've got Andrea's at 130. Um, Annabelle yes, Chapman's yes. also at 130, I think. 135, somewhere around that. No, I'm sorry. Andrea's at 135. Annabelle did 130. Um, it's not that far off. I mean, it's <laughs> it's a it's a big it's a big leap in terms of the average folk, but you know, it, it's really not that far off from a five-time winner of World's Strongest Man. What his best log was versus what a couple of people can do now on, on the female right. side. You know, it's not, it's extraordinary, but it's not uniquely extraordinary. It's, you, it's not the only person, you know, as, as, as strong as you are, you're not gonna be the only person who's doing 275 on the axle within, no. you know, soon. Well, that's that's kind of what Eddie Hall said too. He said, I, I'll never be the only man to deadlift 500, just the first one. Yeah, that's very true. And that's what you have to keep in mind is, yeah, we'll hold the world records, but they'll ultimately be broken. But to me, in my head, that's where things get fun. Like, yeah, you want to hold your record for as long as you want, whatever. But when it's broken, like, okay, they just set that bar a little bit higher. 
let's train it, let's set it higher. And then you get that back and forth. And that's what I'm looking forward to is what makes it exciting. It doesn't let you get comfortable. Because once you get comfortable, you get sedentary. And then who knows, you might lose it if you don't keep up, keep practicing. So the push is what's fun for me. That challenge that we call flip the switch inside of yourself. That is what I look forward to every time I compete or step on the platform. There's a, uh, there's a strong man named Asko Karu. I don't know if you know Karu, the deadlifter. Um, mm. from, I think he's Estonian. Um, but he says that he's not training for the world record and the deadlift. He's training to set his own personal best. And I, I feel like that's kind of in line with what you've been saying where, you know, the fact that you're planning on pushing close to 300 on, on the axle and the log at, at some point, it might not be this weekend, but at, at some point soon, you know, yeah. whether or not that's a world record, it seems like it's more of a personal accomplishment for you, right? You know. Exactly. And so one of the funniest feelings, honestly, is thinking that the world records that I hit aren't even PRs. So that's actually pretty cool to think about. Did you, did you do more than, yeah, because you did 220 in training on the block, right? I did. And then, okay, and then 215 on the day. Yeah, that's pretty impressive so I guess I don't I didn't want to take too much of your time so I really just got one last thing to ask you so I could probably well, you're sit here and <laughs> ramble on about strongman all day um so I guess you're 29 now if you could go mm -hmm. back 11 years to an 18 year old Nadia what what do you think you'd say to yourself and what kind of advice would you give life lifting any anything really in that in that realm see that's where i feel like people always go back and they'll say something honestly if i had the chance to go back i wouldn't because you don't know what you would change there is called like the butterfly effect the smallest little change the smallest little flip of the switch and the entire life changes so honestly to lead me where i am today i would stay quiet i would just let the life go as it does because who knows what backstory built me into what I am now who knows what's fueling me into training now so if you go back and change something you might not be that same person That's a, good answer. a lot of people have been saying something similar that they wouldn't really change what they you would can't. do <laughs> and if you want to change something that just tells me that you're unhappy with where you are right now Fair point. well I think I've, I've held you for about 40 minutes now <laughs> I had the time. I appreciate it. I know we we didn't have the time on Wednesday, but we got it all got it all sorted out. No, I appreciate that. No problem. Just happy happy to talk with you. So I think that should that should do it for today. Unless you have any closing thoughts. <laughs> no, not really. I'm just excited for this weekend. So um, probably just going to finish up with lazy packing. I am like a guy. I wait to the last second. So throw everything in a bag. <laughs> and then be on my way. Best of luck to you this weekend. I, I know I'll be watching. Hopefully other people in the Barbell Club will be watching too. No, yeah, thank you. I hope so. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, good luck. Thank you for your time. And, oh, no, thank you. Hope you have a good rest of your day. I hope so too. Have a good day. Right. Thanks, buddy. No <laughs> Bye.